Oh, son of a bitch. God damn it, I keep on shit up, don't I? Well, welcome back YouTubers, and today we're talking about cooling your V8 Swap S10. This will work for Gen 1, Gen 2, and Gen 3, or whatever Gen motor you want to put in your particular application. Now, I know that's a broad statement, but I do know a lot about cooling a Gen 1 and a Gen 2. And the Gen 2 has a steam vent, just like the LS, so this most likely will work for your swap also. I'll just give you tips and tricks because I've tried a lot over the years and I find this to work great for me. So take all these tips and tricks that I'm going to give to you so that way when you get your V8 swap in your S10, you won't be at a stoplight asking yourself, why is the heat going up? I put the radiator the internet says to put in there. A lot of that doesn't work. So it's all about the entire combination. So today, that's what we're talking about. Okay, so a quick disclaimer on this, but you can still use information in this video to help you out. Uh, I don't remember all the factory stuff went that has the hood latch on there and the little cable. I removed all that of mine. I just use pins, hood pins to keep my hood closed. And I am retaining the factory little kickstand right here for your hood. So if you want something that talks about keeping everything factory, this might not be the video for you, but it's still good information that you might want to consider if you want to keep resting cool because I never had any luck or that much luck on the really hot days with stuff that fit in the factory location. As you can see, I have cut a lot of stuff out of mine to get as much airflow to this guy and other motors as possible. This is a 400 cubic inch small block Chevy. So if it keeps this cool, Chances are it'll keep your stock small block Chevy cool even in the hottest days. Okay, the first thing I always get, hey, what part number are you using on your S10? Let me tell you, whatever fits in the location you cut out. Let me show you what I cut out first. The bottom of the core support, see this right here? I cut that completely out. From here all the way to here, gone. The supports for core support are right here in the sides. And what that allows you to do, it allows you to get 31 inches across, right? So from here, if I were to take this, if I, can, if I know how to use a fucking ruler, take it right here, that gives you 31 inches. Now, all universal radiators, at least the ones that I found lately, will support 31 inches this way right here you can get them in there and then the top what it allows you to do it allows you to go from this angle like this at an angle and go to the top and you can see right here you can get about 20 inches right here so 31 to 20 inches a universal radiator will fit right in there and that's what we have over here Okay, see so a lot of you guys are not gonna like this and this is the God's honest truth. One thing you cannot cheap out on is the fan and shroud. This happens to be a JEGS fan shroud. It's slightly larger to fit in between the cores right here. So I kind of had to do some trickery to keep it on there nice and clean. So the bigger the fan shroud that covers all of your radiator, the better. These two 12 inch fans, uh, or will pull about 3,100 CFM. So you have to pull air across your entire radiator if you want to keep this thing cool. If you put one fan in the middle, you sit in a light, you're going to be in trouble. It will not cool. So a fan plus shroud. This right here happens to be not on sale, $300. I know you guys aren't going to want to hear that. Maybe you can get two, uh, you know, cheap AutoZone fans and then build your own shroud, whatever you want to do. Uh, you have to have a good shroud. I'm just going to emphasize, good shroud, good fans to pull a lot of CFM over your radiator is the second most important thing besides your radiator. Maybe even the first, 
but you have to have something like this right here to keep it cool. Okay, I know someone's gonna talk shit on this, but the way I ended up mounting the fan shroud, I did have a grand scheme of fabricating mounts to go around there and there, and they clamp on all that other shit, but after fixing everything else in my truck when the dry shaft flew out and fabricating a whole bunch of new safety stuff, I ended up having a getter done moment. So this is what I did. This is the end of this. I had did other things, but this is what I ended up doing at the end. So I just used the typical, so this is a very heavy fan shroud. Use a typical fan shroud mounts, but I used a bunch of them. I used two right here, one right there, one right there, and then three down there. So hopefully that keeps it on there. I used a, a lot more than you're supposed to use, but we want to make sure this guy doesn't fly out so that I ended up running it over at the track. All right, so right here, this is where I cut the pour support. So has an opening right here, and this is just a piece of metal bent right here to keep your radiator from going forward. I'll show you how it all goes in here in a little bit. And I put a piece of rubber right here. It's important that you have rubber everywhere. See, last time I just had this guy kind of sitting like this. And what happened is it rubbed over time. That's what ruined my last radiator. That's why we're here now. So I think I have another idea that might work. So we shove that guy up in there and then kind of fold it like this. And then that way it'll fit right here. See that? It'll fit right in here. So that, this is just some radiator hose that I cut. And I even bought things that are better than this. They didn't work good. I put Pulled it out a couple of times, and I think this is going to work the best. You'll see it in a little bit. See, this is what I actually bought right here. See this? It's supposed to fit in the little holes and stay. But no matter what I did, <laughs> I couldn't get it really to stay. And it just didn't, it wanted to flap around when the radiator went on there. It just kind of moved. So, and you can see, I even drilled holes down there. See those holes down there? I tried both sides. We'll just say those holes right there are a failed attempt and weight reduction. So I didn't have much luck with the purpose made little rubber mounts. Bottom the top, we have a piece of rubber right there for my hose, piece of rubber right here. Basically, I just made them so they fit in there. It keeps in there and the radiator comes on there. It kind of pushes up against it like that. Oh, oh son of a bitch. God damn it, I keep on fucking shit up, don't I? Okay, so it's in between the mouse down there. I'll show you later on, but I made these guys right here. All I did was weld a nut right here. So that way you can just take a bolt and bolt it in. Pretty simple, right? And you gotta make sure every point of contact has rubber. You don't want this guy rubbing on metal to metal anywhere. It has to be rubber, rubber everywhere this guy hits. So I, I do have little rubber pieces right here. I'll show you guys in a second. So I'm gonna pull this back, get this rubber piece right here, pull it back. And then we're gonna take one bracket at first. And then we are just going to do this right here. And we're gonna start her. And I'll just start all this and then I'll show you what I got going on here in a second. Okay, so for the top mounts, all I did was make these little brackets, made sure that they kind of clamp it in. But be careful, because I was really trying to make these clamp really hard and end up like screwed up the first cores right here. I'm not the core with little fins, it still works fine. So what I did was make my mounts, and then when you get them on there, all you do is just kind of turn them like so. And of course, we have a nut welded to the front of the support, and you can just screw these bolts in there, and it makes it pretty easy to lock down, and trust me, it is not going anywhere. We have rubber sitting right there, so it's not hitting up against metal to metal. We did that on both sides. And then down there, you can see how this works. Let me brighten it up a little bit. See that? And we have the rubber right here, and you can see that it keeps away from the sides, and it's in there, it's locked pretty good. Okay, so we've got everything buttoned up. Let's talk about the hoses real quick. So the hoses, of course, on a Gen 1, your hose comes from the top of the intake. Every motor, every small block is still different. LT1 comes right off of that, LS, whatever. But anyway, so you're gonna have to go find hoses that work. There is no 
hose that says, I'm gonna go from a small block Chevy to this radiator on a V8 S10, unless you get some elaborate, very expensive kit. So you have to just make a template, go to your parts store, and then find the hoses that fit. Now on the LT1 or LS, something that has a steam vent, you need this to come from the heads into this guy right here, and they just kind of give you this guy right here. I'll have to find the part number for this. I'll put it up on the description or a little window right here. And basically this is a bleed, steam vent, return goes here. So this goes, when it goes into your motor and the exit, it pulls it out that way into the radiator. So that's how that works. Okay, so a thermostat. In my experience, it's best just to get a 180 run-of-the-mill stock thermostat. Don't need no high flow shit. The only thing I do is put a little air bleed hole right there so it's easier to get the air out of the system. And if you see the motor, how it kind of sits a little bit like this. So you just kind of put that little air bubble right there in the front. So that way when air comes out and then it makes it easier when you're first filling it. And then when it completely opens up, it's easy to get all the air bubbles out. Just a little extra, you know, precaution and help with this guy it goes a long way with a little cheap, inexpensive thermostat. And finally, if you notice this, why I like this, look, it's a tool holder. So you just put shit right there if you want. And not only that, but if you notice, this is the highest point in the motor too. So, you know, so it makes it really easy to get all the air bled out the system. If your highest point is right here, where your cap is, this makes your life a lot easier on that aspect. So let's put some fluid in here. We'll start her up. If you're curious how strong those fans are, check it out. Yep, they move some air. Ooh, one more thing I forgot to tell you is important. A lot of these radiators, these uh, cheap and expensive um, universals don't have a drain, so you need to get a little adapter here. Basically, it just has a little spill nipple on the bottom. It's the same thing as this guy right here. So you have a source to drain it. Well, that's pretty much it, you mother truckers. So, that's how I have mine set up. That's how it's worked for me. Hopefully, this video will point you in the right direction so that you can take your VHS-10 anywhere you want and not worry about it overheating at stoplights and pulling over and putting it into your fun. Until next time, don't forget to subscribe. Peace.